Hey, what's up, guys? This is during productions. This is the first time we open box a Mac Revel laptop, which is kind of considered the borderline laptops producers from China. The specs are on the paper is Mac Revel S2 Air with an R7 4800H from AMD R7, 8 core 16 threads, and pretty decent RAM, 16 gigabytes, 512 gigabytes of storage and 100% sRGB 14 inch display. This is pretty impressive. Out of box, you got another box. Well, this is uh, unexpected. Let us just open it. And outside the box, you got a laptop, a pretty wild charger, and a manual. The manual is kind of old Chinese style with quite some um, paperwork on top even with some stamps. It looks a bit ugly. In today's opinions, well, the charger is very big. It's a 90 watt one. Kind of do not understand. The laptop itself is just 1.1 kilograms, but the charger is so huge. And every time you go out, if you just want to have some more safety bring your charger, it's much heavier. Even than the 1.5 kilogram laptop, it's a bit unacceptable. Well, understandable, this is just bottom line or basic laptops. Looking at the laptop itself, it's actually not that bad for the first impression. It's very, very light on hand, though it's 14 inch. It's just 1.1 kilograms. It feels like my Surface Pro with the keyboard or Lenovo Mix. It's very, very light on hand. On the front side, it's metallic with a pretty circular logo over there. Well, the bronze, the Mac Revel. But probably you will not recognize that. On the back side, it is pretty plasticky. The plastic is pretty soft. Um, some people like me, we do not really like this design. But anyway, if you never touch the back panel, it's not really a big issue. It got quite many ports, quite impressive, and such a slim chases. One Kingston lock, one length port, two Type-A USB port, and a headphone jack. On the other side, you've got one Type-C. It can be used for charging, but you definitely need a 90 watt charger, one Type-A charger, uh, one Type-A port, one HDMI, and a charging port. Not really sure what's that for. Probably it was designed to be some kind of port, but unfortunately now, we cannot see any port. If you just break the seal, you will just lose your warranty opening the back panel. You can use your single hand to open it easily. This is pleasing. After you open the lid, you can feel some kind of a low end basic laptop from its design. It's like go to Best Buy and just buy a 200 laptop. Everything is just usable, but definitely no craftsmanship. Everything necessary is on top. You've got a Mac webcam at the top. You've got a Mac Revel logo at the bottom of the screen panel. The bezel is quite narrow. And the top, you even have a plastic uh, wrap to protect the webcam panel. The overall screen feels pretty good, at least if you do not turn it on. The trackpad, you also got some kind of uh, protected plastic, which is not often nowadays. The keyboard is also quite cheap side. It uses the old fashioned keyboard, not the chocolate keyboard we use widely nowadays. This type of old fashioned keyboard, you will find yourself easily press the other key without any knowing. So um, it's a bit hard for people to use this type of old keyboard comparing to nowadays standard. Also, this type of keyboard is easier to break because just below the keyboard, there is a very large sink for water and any droplet of water will just enter the bottom of the keyboard and destroy the key. Those chocolate keyboard does not have such a significant problem. Slight water may not be a serious issue. We already did some preliminary setup on the Windows OS. The power button is very difficult to use. You do not have a very clear, responsive weather you press it 
or not. Well, this is to be expected for this type of brand. But after you power it on, things are pretty smooth. The speed is fast. The wallpaper is also pretty machine revel standard. Opening general apps is also pretty fast, quite responsive actually. Not the fastest ever tested, it, but definitely on the fast side. This is kind of to be expected using the top-notch AMD R7 standard voltage processor 4800H. Now let us just open a YouTube video to check out the display and sound quality. London Tube Singer. The overall sound quality is pretty nice, although the loudness is quite limited. It is kind of expected in this type of cheap or third line, bottom line laptops, but well, it's definitely usable sound quality. The display quality is acceptable in this type of basic laptops. It's uh, just by comparison, the Xiaoxing Air 14 got a better screen than this, and it's noticeably more contrasty. This one is not really contrasty. As for the color gamma, it looks like a high color gamma screen, but while with the low contrast ratio, you will not really benefit too much. This laptop has a standard voltage version of AMD Ryzen 4000 and 16 gigabytes of RAM on the motherboard. It's not soldered. You can replace it and even top up to 32 gigabytes the battery is 46 watt hours and considering just 4 to 5 watt discharge rate in idle mode you will get about 10 hours battery life maximum and about 6 to 7 hours in light work even you just use it a bit more heavily in moderate work you'll definitely get something like 5 hours 4 hours no too much issue this is pretty safe the temperature is also pretty low the cpu power package is just 1 watt much better than intel The GPU is a 448 shaders version, which is lower than the 512 version from 4800U. It is the same as the new 4750U version. The display is from Inalux, it's a 40 inch panel, 100% sRGB ratio, and just 700 versus 1 contrast ratio. Nowadays, it is better to have a 1K versus 1, and even the low end Xiaoxin Air 14 from Lenovo get 800 versus 1 which will be noticeably better. On the contrast, the Yoga 14S from Lenovo, a more premium device, have 1.5K versus 1, which will give you a significantly different experience. The solid state drive is from Fission, China. It's a decent one, and it's definitely pretty quick. There's nothing to complain about, considering this price range. The approximate speed can go beyond two gigabytes, per second and it's pretty fast which we will be talking about a bit later on the solid state drive test the wi-fi is from intel it's a low frequent it's not really a frequently used one well it's a cheap one but it should be pretty stable considering it is from intel out of the box you got quite good benchmarks and the optimization is pretty nice the memory speed is pretty good. 
and the latency is below 90 nanoseconds, which is best on the AMD platform. The solid state drive is almost a PM991 level. The scores are pretty good and it's pretty usable. The BMD ROB speed test, the CPU is very fast, 23 frames per second. It's an MX50 CPU, and the GPU definitely lacks some optimization for Blackmagic software. The Cinebench R15 has a very high score. The OpenGL has an 80 frames per second, which is almost an MX250 level, which got a 90 frames per second plus. The CPU on battery high performance mode is also 1.5K with single core at 181. Those benchmarks are very impressive and the best selling point for this laptop. This laptop will definitely not win on any other place while just on the benchmarks and the speed for those productivity people who just need a machine to run and connect to their display. In the idle mode, the temperature is below 40 Celsius degree, and once the stress test on the CPU started, the CPU will go up to 3 GHz plus, and now 3.4 GHz. The power envelope is now 35 Watt, and then drops slightly to 30 Watt and 3.1 GHz. This is a pretty good strategy, limiting the power envelope and make sure it can run at a decent 60 Celsius degree temperature for quite a long time. After 10 minutes of stability test, the temperature is very stable, still 60 Celsius degree, power envelope 30 watts with the frequency still at 3 gigahertz approximately. Everything is just rocky stable and you cannot feel any change. The fan noise is not really loud, it's quite steady, and the total chassis is just warm and not really hot. The palm area is even cool, so the optimization on the electronic side is considered great. There's one thing have you noticed is that the 4800U and 4800H doesn't really have any difference. In the same power envelope, you just get the same frequency. We tested Lenovo Xiaoxing, we tested Mac Revel, and we also know that the regime from Lenovo and also from HP, they use the same processor for 8800H. It's just that you give the same power and they can run at the same frequency. So if you just need an office laptop, you do not really need to buy a 4800H version. And if you want to look for a gaming laptop, you buy the gaming laptops and probably you will not waste too much energy. We now try to add a GPU into the test and just GPU along, stability test. The frequency is now 1.6 gigahertz, which is maximum. And it now can use about 27 watts, which is pretty strange. This suggesting that this GPU is quite power hungry. For the 4800U series, the GPU is really power efficient. It only uses about 17 watts or 20 watts for 512 shaders to work. Now let us add CPU inside for CPU plus GPU co stability test. The GPU frequency now dropped to around 700 to 800 megahertz, which is decent, and CPU around 2.7 gigahertz. The performance is very good considering the power envelope is limited to 30 watts. It's very much usable for any type of gaming which uses intensive CPU or GPU. So overall, the stability test for this laptop on electronic side is pretty good. After 10 minutes, while well, it's still rocky stable, the 30 watt power envelope is just good for this chases and it can work rocky stable in my environment.